Kem Cho Vadodra, I don't know too much Gujarati, but hello everyone. And uh, today I'm just going to relive certain very important moments of my life. And I'm going to speak at the present level. I'm 10 years old. It's my first day in grade 5. I'm very excited. I'm this carefree, tomboyish, not a care in the world girl. I enter my grade and um, my teacher, as a very bond building exercise, asks us all to sit in a big round circle, all 50 of us, and have our lunch together. I opened my tiffin box and before I could take my first bite, I realized that I was sitting right next to the topper. And the friend of the topper who was sitting right next to her told her, do you know why this loser is sitting next to you, pointing at me? And I was like, really, she's pointing at me? So what if I was an average student, I wasn't the topper? And the topper looked at me, sized me up and said, of course, she thinks some of my brilliance will get rubbed off to her if she sits next to me. What a loser. That was the first defining moment of my life. I rolled up my sleeves and I told myself, what is the big deal about opening a book and studying? I can do that. And so did I. I rolled up my sleeves, opened my book, started studying, wrote an exam, and I did top that year. I'm 15 years old. My board exams are around the corner. I'm extremely excited and nervous. I'm studying very hard in my classroom. I'm in my house and suddenly the doorbell rings. Uncle is there in the house, he's gonna go open the door. I just need to focus on my studies, right? The doorbell rings again and this time I'm a little irritated. I'm like, why can't somebody just go get the door? Don't they know I'm studying? I rush up to the door and my father walks in very irritated. He doesn't even acknowledge me. He, go he goes straight to my uncle's room. I go back to my room start studying accounting and suddenly my dad runs up to me in my room and tells me did you see uncle having these ever and I saw in his hand there were strips of medicines which were emptied out and at that moment I froze I knew something was not right I ran to uncle's room only to find out that there were hundreds of such strips lying by his bedside I knew he had tried to take his own life. He wanted to commit suicide because he had taken so many financial loans. That day was the second most defining moment of my life. I decided nobody in my house and nobody I know and none of my friends are going to die because of a financial crisis. And I studied extremely hard, topped my school, went ahead, got a job and I was financially independent. I am 20 years old. I have just topped my university. I'm the student of the year. I have won the beauty pageant. And I have found the most beautiful love of my life. I can't see, think, read, dream beyond this one man around whom my life centers. Everything else is a blur. He's the only focus in my life. I'm in cloud nine, right? I have everything that I ever need. I have I have fulfilled every aspirations of mine. I am just up there. What else is there to achieve? And just a chance remark by someone very dear. You know what she came and told me? She said, Marwari ladkiyo mein, ya to aapko sundar hona hota hai, ya amir hona hota hai. Nahi to achha ladka nahi milta. Wo ladka tujhse kabhi shaadi nahi karega. You know that one sentence just shattered everything for me. I just thought, that really, I am ugly, because that's the term she used. She said, you are ugly. And for the next 12 years of my life, I kept doing things that I had to, but I could never get over the fact that I was ugly. I'm 32 years old. I'm in a restaurant, eating my meal. And I suddenly bump into my campus friend. And I look at her and I say, hey, Richa, we hug, we kiss, we exchange a lot of greetings. She's in Hong Kong, I live in Bombay, we haven't met in years. And then she tells me, look at you, babe, you look so awesome. You've got twins and look at your body, you're educated, you're just so awesome, you should apply for Mrs. India. And I'm thinking to my head, she's, she's kidding me, right? I mean, I'm ugly, how can I apply for Mrs. India? That's, that's not happening, she's just ridiculing me. You may be those there, but why is she criticizing me like this? And 
I would say, babe, if I had to be a beauty queen, I would do it when I was 16. Why would I do it when I'm 32? And she said, I'm not listening to you. We went back to our normal lives, but she didn't. She got and conspired with my husband. And the next thing that I know was I was crowned Mrs. India World 2013. Within three weeks, I had to pack my bags. I was standing in this world forum. I was in Guangzhou. They were about to announce the top 10 who had won in Mrs. World. The first name, Mrs. America, a lot of applause, everybody's clapping, everybody's happy. And I'm singing a song in my head, it of course can't be, I have to just get this part done and over with. Second name, Mrs. India. And I'm like, this sounds familiar, but of course it's not me, it, it must be Mrs. England because she's the one who's so gorgeous and so pretty and so nice. And I'm still singing that song in my head. And for the second time, I hear the voice, Mrs. India, please, please could you step forward? And at that moment, I knew it was me. I was officially the top 10 most beautiful woman in the world. That was the third defining moment of my life. I'm 35 years old. My chess prodigy son is representing India in the World Championship. We are in Sochi, Russia. It's a very, very critical round. He's playing against a boy from Kazakhstan. I'm running up and down the alley, and so is the opponent's mum. It's been over five hours. Everybody else's game is over, but these two are fighting nail and tooth. The arbiter, who was from Kazakhstan, comes out, and he's screaming at the Kazakhstan's mother. And I know at that minute that my son has an advantage. He's probably winning. I'm extremely nervous, but I'm a little excited and a little relieved. I feel, okay, I think Kush is, Kush is my son's name. I think Kush has it. He, he has it. He, he, he's, he's just going to win this right now. After 10 minutes, he walks in, his strap falling. He's trying to adjust his strap, trying to get his bottle up. And I can't make out anything. I don't know what has happened. Kush, come on, hurry up. Tell me you won, you won, you won. And he walks in and he tells me, Mom, I lost. And I was like, you're fooling with me, right? I know the arbiter told me you're about to win. He said, Mom, that was 10 minutes ago. I blundered, I lost. At that moment, I thought the world has shattered. My son was about to be a world champion. What just happened? This couldn't be happening to me, right? I mean, this is some kind of a nightmare. No, this ain't happening. But then I tried to look calm. We went up to the room, did our normal things. At nine o'clock in the night, when I thought I had put my son to sleep, I called up my husband and I said, how could he make that mistake? This was so important. And suddenly, I heard a voice behind me. My son turned away and he told me, Mom, the game is over. Can we please move on? I have a game tomorrow. At that moment, my seven-year-old taught me how to deal with failure. That was the fourth divine moment of my life. When I was 10, I became independent from the fear of criticism. I just decided with my three pillars, as I call my three Ds, discipline, determination, dedication, I can achieve anything. All I need to do is just keep doing it. And as long as you do it, things fall into place. That was my first lesson in independence. At 15, I realized the importance of financial independence. I wouldn't be that Marwari girl who would get married at the age of 17 or 18 and I wouldn't want to just marry somebody and be dependent on him throughout my life. I got a degree, I taught my university, I got a job, I'm financially independent and nothing, absolutely nothing, no matter how much money my husband has, that independence can be taken away from me. It is important to me. At 32, I realized that self-doubt is my biggest enemy. I was my own enemy. I gained independence from self-doubt and self-criticism and I became a beauty queen. And I realized that nothing can, nothing is impossible if you become your own best friend. And now I am my best friend. Nothing comes before me. And uh, that is what has helped me achieve whatever I've little I've managed to achieve in my life. At 35, my seven-year-old son taught me how to be independent from the fear of failure. Failure is nothing but a part of success. 
and it is such a crucial part of success because that's the one that helps you get there. By the way, my son did win the World Biz Champion Championship that year. So, when things start looking blurred, things start feeling that this is the end of the world, the reality is it's not. There's just so much more. I just want to tell you guys one thing before I conclude. That at every crossroad of our lives, and I'm sure each one of us have had many defining moments in our, in our own lives. Each one of us have a brilliant story to say. All that I need to tell you is one thought. That at the crossroad of life, when you have a choice, you have the independence of making a choice. And if you have to choose, choose the path that leads to your own happiness. No matter how uncomfortable it is, no matter how much courage you need to gather up to walk that path, but please make your story count. Thank you.